It's eight o'clock on a Monday morning in Surrey. Isaac. A year ago, Zach Aberdeen would have been hard at work by now at his job in the city. <laughs> but in July, he was made redundant from his six-figure salary job. <laughs> Nowadays, his first priority in the morning is getting the kids to school. Every morning I get to do a school run. That's really, really improved the quality of my life. Unfortunately, I don't get paid to do that. Getting work in a rapidly shrinking finance industry is going to be tough. I spoke to a couple of guys last week who'd been unemployed for, in one case, nearly 12 months, and the other guy had been um, made redundant from one job in March and was made redundant from a second job that he managed to secure in September. So, you know, it, it's, it's rough out there. But Zach is just a casualty of a bigger problem. The collapse of the city has had wider implications. The ripple effect that this has had has made it really challenging for companies that provide services to big business. And this has affected Shireen Morrison. Last year, she was made redundant from her job in business travel bookings. The banking affected us because they're cutting back. Part of it is the travelling. That's you know that's a huge, huge market because you get bankers flying all over the world, business class, which is quite a lot of money. So you know having to cut back there would affect the services I provide. So yeah, the banking definitely has affected me. Shireen has been working hard to get a new job, but competition is fierce. What I'm finding is that there's one vacancy and there's like 43 people who have already applied for it. I still apply because you never know, but it's just, it's um, quite scary to see how many people are going for the one position. I wondered if I could help Shireen. So before Christmas, I met her to give her some advice. Shireen, hi. Nice to meet you. Please nice take you a seat. Thank you very much. Shireen, how tall are you? Six foot two. Six foot two, yeah, my God. My family are very tall. Mum and dad are very tall. When you're reading a CV, yeah. one of the key things is to have something in there that captures people's imagination. Yeah. And I know if I read that, I'd, it would make me stop and think, God, six foot two. Yeah. And I'd immediately kind of imagine you. So just as a quick observation, yeah. I like the six foot two. Excellent, I will put that in. Okay. <laughs> One of the other things that I've learned is 90% of CVs today are sent via email. Yeah. And the odd occasion when somebody posts the CV to me, for some strange reason, I actually read it. OK, that I'll definitely do, definitely. And Shreen, I want to know, by January, I yeah. want to know that you're working. Me too. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> me <All right>. too. <laughs> nice to see you. Thank you Take very care. much. I also invited Zach to come and meet me. Until the crash, he was a high flyer in the finance industry. Zach, hi, nice to see you. Please take a seat. I think there's a lot he could do to improve his CV. Very nice to meet you, Zach. And you? Firstly, I think your CV sucks. Right. OK, that's a technical phrase. Yes, I've heard it before. OK. I think for somebody of your seniority, I think this is very cold, I think it's very bland, and I don't think it sells you off the page. Do you think the presentation's important? I, I think it is. Um, but Does this have any presentation? Look, it's all kind of, you know, chunked nicely. Oh, fantastic. How old is your <laughs> son? Seven? Yes. I think he could do that as well, he couldn't could, he? Yeah. Well, he certainly yeah. could, yes. Um, I'd expect a little more from you, Zach. That's fair. Okay. But this doesn't always go out on its own. Obviously, it okay. goes out with a covering letter. Is it as bland as, as this? Um, it doesn't have flashing lights on it. Yeah, it's shredded. OK. What I want to read is, your organisation is something I've always been very impressed with, I've admired. I understand the business was established 25 years ago, and, and believe it or not, I'll read that quite interestingly, because actually it's about me. <laughs> and you'll find... That Ultimately, though, I think Zach needs to consider a career change. You're in a sector where everybody else is laying lots of people off, so if there was an opportunity, let's just say, the amount of people applying for that would just be ridiculous. Yeah. You know, if I, if I had a brother or a, or a sister in that industry, I'd be telling them, move on. With 130,000 job losses in finance in the last year, a career change may be the only option for many. But it's hard to see which industry they could move into.
nearly two million are unemployed and every area of the economy has been hit. Some experts say that all we can do is wait it out. But I do believe that we can help ourselves. So I put together a team of some of Britain's best business brains to talk about what can be done. Ruth Lee is a former head of policy at the Institute of Directors. At the end of the day, with some companies, sadly, you have to say, I'm sorry, your time is up. Will Hutton runs the Work Foundation. It's Have not like France or Germany where you're effectively married to your employee. Tristan Ramos is one of my key business advisors. I think the unemployment rate will go up. I don't see any way around that. Brendan Barber is General Secretary of the TUC. People uh, are shipped out the door with, uh, with no notice. And Albert Ritchell is a professor of economics at LSE. What we are trying to do right now is to save the vote. And as we'll hear from the panel later, the world has turned upside down. Back in south-east London, Shireen Morrison is still looking for a job. I'm now going to Bexley Heath Job Centre to um, sign on and hopefully look for more jobs. When you get to the job centre, you basically have to go and see your advisor and um, She's probably going to ask me what I've been up to in terms of, you know, have I been looking for work, any interviews, and I'll just basically give her a diary of what I've been up to. Shireen signs on every two weeks. She has to apply for vacancies if her advisor thinks they're suitable. But she doesn't think she's going to find work through the job centre. I just don't see how it's helping me at all. I'm using all the resources they've, you know, provided, but it's just not helping me at all, so... I don't know, I come down here because I have to, but I don't really find it any use. Like Shireen, Zach hasn't had any luck yet. I'm just on my way up to town to increase my network, to talk to people in my network, just see um, who's looking at what. Zach's previous job in the finance industry involved sales. When I met him, I advised him to widen his job search outside finance, and he's taken that on board. I've opened up um, to look at all sorts of jobs, and I'm being as flexible as possible. I'm looking at anything to do with selling anything, so I'm being as broad as possible. The salary range I'm looking at is anything from, you know, um, a quarter of what I was paid upwards, um, which I think is pretty flexible. While Zach sets out to broaden his horizons, Another sector of the economy has seen its prospects shrink dramatically, resulting in thousands of job losses. M&S announces it will close 27 stores. Zavi, the music and DVD retailer, closing 18 stores with the loss of over 350 jobs. I want to know why the high street has been so badly affected, leaving so many unemployed. Brian Roberts is an analyst who studies retail trends. He thinks poor sales have meant that retailers have had to find ways to slash their costs. Can they cut costs in relation to products, or is that really challenging for them to do that? Um, in non-food retail in particular, a lot of retailers have benefited from moving their sourcing to, uh, to the Far East and China in particular. But um, as we So that's a trick really already played now, so that's already factored in? Yeah, very much so. The, the shift away from UK and European um, sourcing is, is, is you know, sort of many years behind us. But unfortunately for non-food retailers with the uh, devaluation of sterling, we're going to see you know, an increase in the real cost of Chinese imports. So that's going to heap further pressure on the retail sector this year. Um, unfortunately for the job market, one of the easiest ways for them to cut costs very quickly and quite significantly is by um, cutting staff. You know, be that is that in not stores. a bit harsh to, to, to lay people off like this in this market? You know, these companies aren't, aren't charities. They are there solely to make profits for their shareholders. So. You know, unfortunately, in, these, in this current economic climate, with sales declining, profitability under pressure, uh, you know, one of the quickest ways to cut costs and improve the bottom line is by um, shedding staff. 